Hello and welcome to another slice of Daily Bread. I'm so glad that you have chosen to join us today. Today's devotional will be brought to us by Pastor Mike Lambert. Pastor Mike, as always, welcome to Daily Bread. And it's good to be with you, Lowell. Now, as we always do, before we begin, we like to open with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have given to us. We also thank you for your precious word. And as we open its sacred pages and as we study what it has to say to us. We pray that your Holy Spirit will be with us and guide us into all truth. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And I'd like to invite each one of you to join me for this devotional. We're heading to Matthew chapter five. Matthew chapter five, we're heading to what we call the Sermon on the Mount. And you remember that in the first section of Matthew chapter five, we have what we call the Beatitudes, which are a step-by-step -step progression or description of the plan of redemption. And then after Jesus gave to the people on the, multi the multitude on the mountain that uh, day, uh, the steps of the plan of redemption, he then said that they were to be salt and light. And in our devotional today, I specifically want to look at this idea of being light, not so much light as the light itself, but light in the right place. Follow along with me in your reading. So we're going to Matthew chapter five, starting with verse 14. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. I lived on a, in a city that was not so much on a hill out in eastern Montana. There are no hills out there. <laughs> well, maybe a few small ones. These little rises and bluffs and draws. And I lived in Miles City, and it's kind of up on a little bit of a bluff, you see. And I had church in Miles City and in Glendive and down in Bell Tower. And when I was coming back from Glendive, about 85 miles stretch there between Miles City and Glendive, when I left Glendive coming west, heading back to Miles City, I could see at nighttime the lights of Miles City off in the distance. It was kind of up on one of those little bluffs there. You could see it. You could not miss it at all. But I've also lived in the city up in northern Idaho. It was up, you know, up in Bonners Ferry, Idaho. Beautiful city. You could be coming into Bonners Ferry, uh, driving north on Highway 95, and just be a couple of miles from the city, and you're not going to see it. The reason why is because it's not set on a hill. It's down uh, on the river, and you have to come over the south rise and then drop down about 500 feet to the city. You don't see the city until you get to the place where it just kind of drops down. The point is simply this, uh, a city that is placed in the right place, that is on a hill, uh, is going to be seen. We continue the thought, uh, verse 15, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel but on a candlestick and to give it light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And we have talked uh, the time that I've had the privilege of being on Daily Bread here through the years. We've talked about this idea of being light. And of course, I do believe that is the main point, the issue of uh, how a person becomes a Christian, how they are lit and then how they can give that light. And we are only lit by the one who is light, and that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by accepting Him, His sacrifice for us, His life, His sacrifice, His resurrection, and His ministry in the heavenly sanctuary on our behalf. That's how we are lit, and that's how we stay being light. But the point today is the placing of the light. You notice in the text, it's not placed under a bushel, Jesus' point is simple, isn't it? Once, once we have accepted Christ as our Savior and Lord, then we are going to be light. The question is, where is that light going to shine? For some people, when they become a Christian, uh, it's altogether appropriate for them to leave the place where they are. It would not be appropriate for them to stay there because uh, where they are at is not in harmony with the principles of God's kingdom. For some people, uh, once they have become Christians, they uh, perfectly can stay where they are and be light and share God's love and His will where they are at. 
uh, probably the deciding factor, the main part of the deciding factor of where we are placed uh, is simply from the providence of God. Um, God may place one person here and another person there. If you and I had our own way on our placing, we would probably want our lights to be shining. Maybe I would decide, I think I would like my light to be shining out at Harris Park where it's beautiful, or maybe Pioneer Park at the gazebo. But the reality is, God may want me to shine my light, God may want you to shine your light in a place that, let's say, is maybe a poorer neighborhood in the valley. One who loves God and desires to serve Him may choose maybe one, one of the worst places on planet Earth rather than the better. At any rate, God is the one who helps us and leads and guides us to the place where we need to be. And I got a question for you. Have you ever been in the wrong place? <laughs> and have you ever been in the right place? Um, I have shared a little bit of my personal testimony with you. And of course, I was raised as a ward of the court of the state of Washington. And I lived in 16 different homes growing up uh, from the time I was born to the time I turned 18. Home number 16, I'm going to say, was the right place. And an aunt and uncle who took me in and loved me as their own, I call it Sweet 16. But I can tell you personally, it, it's, it's, not, it's not very fun to be in the wrong place. Uh, Christ will always place us in the right place. And He will open doors and He will close doors and let us know exactly where that's at. Uh, in junior high, I was uh, on, a, on a basketball team and our coaches drew, it was at the end of the game and our coaches said for defense we were going to go zone. We weren't playing man on man, we were going to zone. We were up by one point and uh, the team had, the other team had the ball and so we were to stay in our particular zone. I was a shooting guard and I had one area of the court where I was supposed to stay. Well, I had been guarding uh, one particular individual for most of the game. And in my mindset, I had the idea, okay, we're playing zone, but when the whistle blew and the action began, I saw my guy that I had been guarding the whole time take off and he cut through the lane. And guess what I did? I forgot the coach's instruction and I followed the guy through the lane and uh, the area where I was supposed to be was open. Well, long story short, the point guard through the point guard of that other team threw the ball to the shooting guard in that zone, which had no one there to play defense. And the guy nailed a three-pointer to win the game. And the coach, of course, gave me a little bit of a talking, saying, how is it that you ended up in the wrong place? I had you here for a particular reason. That was the right place and we lost the game because I was in the wrong place. So this is the simple question. Have you ever been in the wrong place? Uh, have you been in the right place? God's heart's desire for us is to be in the right place. About a little over 13 years ago, I was pastoring up in northern Idaho in the city that I mentioned to you earlier in this devotion, I was pastoring the Bonners Ferry District. And I had been there for around 10 years. And I got a phone call from our leader of the Upper Columbia Conference, the conference president. And he said, Mike, we have voted unanimously to uh, transfer you uh, down to the middle of the Walla Walla Valley at the State Line Church. And that was something that I wasn't particularly excited about at the time. Um, because I lived in an area, Ballers Ferry is beautiful, the churches were doing well, they were growing. Uh, we lived in an area where there are all kinds of hikes, waterfalls, mountain climbing, swimming, canoeing. We were into that. By the way, we're still into that. Uh, but at that time, we just thought, well, I don't think that's God's will. That's not the place for us. And so Max said, I want you to, our conference president at that time said, we want you to pray about that. And I unwisely said, Max, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that's the place. 
He said, well, take a few days to pray about it. And I made the comment that I didn't think that that was something that I needed to pray about. And when that comment was made, there was a click on the other end of the line. Uh, the president hung up on me. And I thought to myself, how is it that the conference president could hang up on me? And then I thought, well, I, probably because I said I didn't need to pray about it, which of course is a bad answer. And when I set down the phone, my wife who was working in the kitchen and overheard part of the conversation, my side of the conversation, she said, the conference wants to transfer you and move you down to the Walla Walla Valley, don't they? And I said, how did you know? She said, I just had a feeling. And then she, as all good wives do, she made the comment, I think that you need to go down to your study and just simply pray about it. Because when we got married, we decided that we would go wherever the Lord would lead us. Whatever doors were open, we would obey. So we as a, we as a family, we prayed about it for the f next few days. And of course, the rest is history. We, a couple of months ago, started our 14th year here in the Walla Walla Valley. And we believe that we're in the right place. We believed that we were in the right place when the call came. And we're willing to consider another place. Well, you and I don't know for sure where all God might take us. He might move us somewhere else here in the United States. He might send us to Africa, India, China. Wherever God opens the doors and then closes the doors, we want to not go where the doors close. We want to be where the doors are open. But really the main point is this, not only being in the right place, but being in the right place for the right reason. The candle is in the right place, not under the bushel. And by the way, there's a whole devo another devotional on that that I call under the bushel. There are lots of ways that we get under the bushel. We don't want to be there. That's the wrong place. Where's the right place? for the candle up on the candlestick. Some people say, well, I'll shine. I'm willing to shine, but I'll shine from the floor. No, the householder. If the candle's on the floor, what's the householder gonna do? Place it up on the candlestick. The right place is the place where the Christian can be seen. Uh, the place where the Christian is going to be visible. The place where his faith is gonna be able to be confessed and he is open to sharing the grand love of God and all the things that he has done for us. And so the candle is in the right place when Christ sets it. And that's where you and I want to be. And wherever that is, if he's leading and you and I are following, it indeed is the right place. Will you pray with me? Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you so much for the privilege that we've had to take a little bit of time in your word. And here we see Jesus simply stating that the candle is set on the candlestick. It's in the right place. The city is set up on a hill. That's the right place if it's going to be visible. And Father, we understand and believe that you want our faith in you, our love in you, and our service for you to be a visible thing that people would see the good works and glorify you. Father, we pray that we would always be open to your placing and keep us to this, we humbly ask in Jesus' name, amen.